Yo, what is going on, guys? Jiri Yumiko here, and today we're back with some more Katawa Shoujo. Now, I know it's been way too long since I picked up this series, but, uh, yay, <laughs> we're back, right? So, I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that this... Well, well I think Hanako's route is actually supposed to be the longest, I think. So, this actually may not be the last episode, but hey, we'll see. Let's go ahead and load in... Uh, September 24th. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. <clears throat> My eyes feel heavy as they slowly open. The light from outside making me blink a bit to let them get adjusted. My body feels like lead and my head feels just as heavy. Waking up to an unfamiliar ceiling is an uncomfortable feeling. It reminds me of the first time I awoke to the dimpled white tile ceiling of the hospital. It's only after spending a few seconds staring up at it that I realize where I am. This is Hanako's dormitory room. I feel as though my heart stopped again as the events of last night rush through my head. Blood rushes to my cheeks and I shut my eyes once more. There's very little point to getting myself worked up this early though, so I try to push things out of my mind for now. I roll my head to the side to see if Hanako's where she was when I drifted off to sleep. All that's there now is an empty space on the bed and the room beyond. I sluggishly sit up and rub my eyes before pinching the bridge of my nose and looking around the room. The only person here is me. I'm still bereft of my clothes and I, ugh, I'm still bereft of my clothes and after a quick scan of, of the floor for them, I notice that they're neatly folded in a corner of the room. Try as I might, I can't see Hanako's anywhere. The foil packet for the condom's been removed too, presumably put into the bin. With a great yawn, I get myself out of bed and quickly look for some underwear. I grimace a little at the prospect of putting my boxers back on after yesterday's efforts did a, uh, did a job on them, <laughs> but I don't have much choice. I get that, dude. Like, not necessarily with what he's talking about, but just in general when it's like, I don't know, you work up like a sweat or something, and then for some reason you have to take your underwear off for um, an amount of time and put them back on. It just, it just feels uncomfortable. Taking advantage of the fact that I have some time without anyone around, I get myself dressed for the coming school day in short order. And then, I'm alone. Without anything more to busy myself with, my mind becomes focused on the fact that I'm standing in another person's bedroom after we spent the night together, but there's not a single sign of her around. My gut proves to be more helpful than my brain at working out this riddle. With a loud growl, it reminds me that she may well just be getting breakfast. I would have liked to wake up next to her, but maybe it's a good thing that I have a few moments alone. Hanako's room, as always, is quite bleak in appearance. There are precious few decorations, and practically no personal artifacts that aren't hidden away in cupboards and drawers. She's lived here for three years, but the room looks as if it's been... looks as if it's barely been occupied for a single day. I shouldn't overthink this. She might just like living this way, as some do. Having the ability to put such low stock in physical possessions does have its advantages, but even so, it feels a little disconcerting given her past. <clears throat> She said she viewed herself as having had her life on hold while at the orphanage. She certainly lives as if she still does, but after what happened last night, it's pretty hard to imagine that she still thinks the same way. The sound of the door handle cracks to my thoughts and I turn to face it. Sure enough, Hanako comes through and shuts the door behind her. She has what seemed to be two microwaved instant meals in her hands, so this is a little difficult. Good morning, Hanako. M morning she gives a little bow before making her way to her desk, sitting, setting down both plates. I can now see one of, I can now see them to be small saute dishes, their contents steaming, with a fork stuck inside the rice of each. I give thanks to her for bringing them in, and we each take one and get down to eating. She sits on her desk chair, and I sit on the side of the bed. I don't like talking while eating, so the silence between us is isn't, isn't annoying in and of itself. It's the fact that it only exists because we don't quite know what to say to each other that's off-putting. Hanako glances towards me every so often, and as she eats. I only notice her doing so because I'm doing just the same thing. We're eating together as if we're a couple. We even had sex last night. A first for the both of us. Something feels... wrong, though. Maybe that's why we can't even say a word to each other as we finish our plates and leave them in the sink. Maybe that's why we leave Hanako's room without holding hands or making small talk. Maybe that's why it feels as if we're further apart than we've ever been before. 
We entered the classroom together, neither of us so much as glancing at each other. Just as we do so, I realize that this may have been a mistake. Shizune lifts her eyebrow at the sight, her suspicions raised. We reach the center aisle between the classroom's desks and look to each other. I'm not quite sure what I should say. Does she want me to address her as a girlfriend? I didn't think our relationship was... Oh, that's why this feels so strange. S see you. Okay. I awkwardly hold up a hand as we part and take our seats at our respective desks. I can't even look back to her out of embarrassment. I feel like the gulf between Hanako and me is because of me. She's an ambient to make her way towards me, but then Motel enters the room. I'm thankful for his arrival being so well-timed, drawing Shizune and her questioning away to wait for another time. I wouldn't have been able to answer her anyway. I like Hanako, but I've never told her what my feelings are for her yet. Hanako never said she saw me as anything beyond a friend either. Yet, despite that, we slept together. The bell to signal the beginning of lunch rings out. Mateo is taken a little off guard, his chemistry lecture being cut off mid-sentence, much to his charge- chagrin? 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 For the entirety of the class, his rambling is passed through one ear and out the other as my mind mulls over the question of Hanako. I can't get her out of my mind, and by now I've managed to wind myself up about it. I realize that she never said yes to what we did. She didn't say no either, but would she have been able to? She's extremely submissive at the best of times, and no doubt it took her a gargantuan effort to show me her scarring. I decided to try and at least make conversation with her. That would be better than the monosyllab monosyllabic communication that's been the most we've managed between each other so far today. Yeah, I mean, like... Alright, just, like, pause for a second here. Uh, it, it's, it's definitely one of those things where it's, like... With who Hanako is and what she's kind of dealing with right now... You know, is what we did maybe a little bit forceful, right? Maybe not exactly forceful, but definitely it could potentially be considered, you know... Taking advantage of the situation, or more accurately, taking advantage of her. Um, but <clears throat> I definitely think that it's good to kind of maybe <laughs> confirm that, or at least talk it out a bit, right? Um, but I do think that all in all, it was likely, you know, a mutual thing. Because... We didn't really force ourselves on her, and I think it's a little bit silly to be like, "Hey, would you like? Are you consenting to having sexual intercourse with me?" Right? Like, it it usually is just a, you know, unspoken kind of thing. Anyways, I walk to her desk, continue to chat, but she awkwardly blushes and looks down even before I come up to her. I take a breath to speak, but find myself lost for words. What in the world should I say to her? Hearing approaching footsteps, I turn to see Shizune and Misha already making their way towards us, no doubt with the intent to start asking troublesome things. A couple of other classmates are looking at us and gossiping between themselves as they throw sidelong glances. They must have noticed Hanako and me coming in together earlier. I open my mouth to reassure Hanako, but she preempts me. I... I... I've gotta go do something! She gets out of her chair and dashes for the door. A couple of the books and pens that were on her desk are sent falling to the floor in her rush. Not many people seem to care about this event. A few look around to see what all the fuss is about, but go back to what they were previously doing soon after. I'm left despairingly looking at the door that Hanako disappeared out of. The idea of running after her passes through my mind, but I'm fairly sure that Hanako can run faster than I can. And besides, what would I say to her once I caught up anyway? Eventually, I simply crouch down and begin picking up the items that have fallen to the ground from her desk. I feel low in every way. Reduced to this, the students pass by me on their way out of the room. I feel a tap on my shoulder. I look up to see she's and Misha looking at me, curiosity about the situation written on their faces. Mixed with a slightly apologetic look at the idea that they were partially responsible for what just happened. Hee-chan, if we can help at all. I just shake my head. This isn't a matter for them, and from Shizune's expression and the tone of Misha's voice, I think they know the same thing. Shizune acknowledges my response and gives a solemn bow before making her way out of the room. Misha soon follows her out, 
obedient, obediently following her role as she's in a shadow. I pick myself up, books and pens in hand, and place them inside Hanako's desk. With the classroom now empty, I end up just leaning against her desk and thinking to myself in silence. It feels like there's a complete emotional disconnect between Tanako and me. We haven't known each other for all that long, and despite wanting to start going out with her, I really don't know that much about how Hanako views things. I've been studying as hard as I can for exams, but I don't feel like I have any real sense of direction behind it. I tried to be, I tried to be a friend to Hanako, even if I couldn't tell her my feelings, and all we've done is drive each other apart. I couldn't even write a letter back to the one girl who ever loved me, Iwanako. What should I do? Ugh, fuck. What should I do? What can I do? I simply don't know the answer to either of those questions. I do know that nobody else can help me with them. Just going back to the way things were should be enough to make me happy, but I know that it can never happen. Something changed between us last night. Maybe it changed beforehand, and it just came to a head then. I know that there's a wall that Hanako has between me and her. I've been hitting that wall every time I've tried to interact with her on any level. But now I'm beginning to think that I have my own wall between us just as much as she does. She had to practically drag my past out of me, and mine was much less traumatic than hers. I want to say it's because I, hadn't, I haven't had long to adjust since my heart attack, but I know full well that it would just be an excuse. The one time I can recall when it really felt like she was opening up to me from, of her own accord when we were playing billiards in the city. I was the one who stopped her from going further. I want to know Hanako better. I want to save our friendship, if not begin a real relationship with her. My mind begins to tick as I sit against her desk, thinking to myself in the empty classroom that we've spent so much time in together. I have to talk to Hanako. I pace around to the park, feelings of anxiety rolling over me. Every so often I reach into my pocket to take out my phone, but each and every time I hesitate and end up slipping it back in. If this were any normal situation, I wouldn't be cutting classes. Unfortunately, it isn't. And so I find myself in the town below the school at 2 in the afternoon. Ever since I met Hanako, I've been the one to initiate everything between us. The one that started conversations, went to her wherever she was, and suggested, that, and suggested what we should do. Today, this once, I don't want to be the only one doing that. My hand dives into my pocket once more. This time, I quickly navigate to the texting menu before I have a chance to change my mind again. Hanako, if you want to talk, I'll be in the park. I'll be at the park in town for a while. Fighting the last measure of doubt, I thumb in my message to Hanako and press the button to send it. And now, I wait. My part in this has been fulfilled. What needs to happen now is for Hanako to make the decision. It would be meaningless for me to drag her here. She needs to decide for herself whether she wants to meet me. The apple juice from the vending machine tastes awfully bitter as I swell it down. My grip on the can has caused it to dent slightly in the middle. I shouldn't be this tense, but it's probably inevitable. Hanako's dear to me. What happened in the last couple of days has put a lot of pressure on both of us. The idea of losing all the progress we've made in coming closer to one another, and losing our friendship as a whole, is deeply unsettling. But even then, I still don't really know how close we are. We may have had sex, but before that... All I knew us to be was friends. Maybe we're more than that. But if so, I never realized it. Maybe that's why I feel so uneasy right now. I don't understand Hanako. And despite all the, to despite all the time we spent together. The minutes are ticking by, and I still have no idea whether she'll show up. H he so? I pause for a moment, almost not believing that I'm hearing the voice I'm hearing. I drop the can and stand up with a start. Hanako. We look at each other for a few seconds before Hanako becomes too embarrassed to maintain eye contact and begins to nervously fiddle with the roughly cut lock of her hair covering the side of her face. When I went to see Hanako in a room by myself after her breakdown, I had no idea what to say. That was fine then. All either of us wanted was each other's presence. Now though, I feel like I need to talk to her directly. I want to break down this wall between us before it forces us apart for good. Hanako, I... What we did that night. How should I interpret that? Hanako stops playing with her hair and looks at me. Her head casts slightly downwards. She looks ashamed, which is probably a good mirror of how I would look now if I weren't so concerned. I thought 
you might eventually go away if I was only someone you, you needed to protect. <clears throat> I thought that if I let you do that, you might see me as someone more than that. My first reaction is disbelief, but I did do it with her after all. I had plenty of opportunities where I could have stopped things, stepped back and questioned what we were doing. In the end, though, I didn't. A horrible feeling rises in the pit of my stomach. She offered herself to me because of what she thought I wanted, and now it feels like I took advantage of her. She may have been willing, but only under false premises. I've never been good at hiding my emotions from physically showing, and now is no different. Hanako looks down once more, a strange mixture of depression, regret, and sickness written to her face. Thick silence hangs in the air, save for the breeze blowing through the trees around us. I knew you couldn't look at me that way. Hanako's words are said in little more than a whisper, seemingly directed just as much at herself as to me. In what way? What do you mean? All I ever was to you was a useless person. Just someone to protect. Someone like a child. I, I wanted to be more to you than that, but after so long, I got used to it. The tone of her voice is unlike any I've heard her use before. She sounds disgusted. Not at me, but at herself. After I came out of my room, I saw that you had started drifting away. I felt like I was going to lose you because you wanted somebody you could have that kind of relationship with. You were more quiet in school than before, and you were getting on so well with Yuko, I thought that I might lose you. She thought I was bored of her because I wanted a romantic relationship? But we're friends, right? I wouldn't just abandon you like that. Even if what you're saying was true. Friendship was something I thought I'd given up on. I stopped believing in others after what happened after the accident. Before the accident happened, I got in well with people and other children. I didn't have many friends, but I didn't mind because I treasured the ones that I had. Afterwards, though, I was called names by the others and teased a lot. It hurt really deeply. The teachers tried to help, but they couldn't do much, and even many of them recoiled just at the sight of me. Among those calling me names and teasing me were the ones that I thought were my closest friends. From then on, I believed that it didn't matter if nobody else acknowledged me. All my existence ever did was make people troubled, after all. It was easier if I just didn't exist. But after meeting Lily, and then you... I tried, but I couldn't make myself think that way again. All that time, she didn't trust me. She thought, just like everyone else in her life had, that she was worthless. Someone to throw away once I got bored of being with her. That hurts. That's the one kind of person I never, ever wanted to be seen as. Because I know better than most just how horrible it feels to be thrown away by those who I thought liked me. She's cracking from the memory she's bringing up. I feel useless, completely unable to console her. In a strange way, though, I'm almost thankful that she's allowing me to know this. The wall between us is going away, even if it hurts so badly to bring it down. Hanako, if you just told me... Was I wrong? Of course you... She wasn't. Hanukkah wasn't wrong. It's difficult to force myself to admit this, but I know trying to deny it is pointless. To me, Angela Lily, she was someone we tried to protect. She had become to me what I had become to my friends after my heart attack, a broken person. I liked her, possibly even loved her, but I never acted on that precisely because I thought she was so fragile. I mean, I don't look at you that way now. I got worried about you after what happened to you in class, and I thought I should try to protect you. When you locked yourself in your room, though, I got afraid. I thought you were rejecting me, and it forced me to think a lot about... different things. I wasn't rejecting you! She blurts out in an almost scared tone to her voice, 
taking me off guard. She quickly becomes embarrassed by her outburst before clenching her fists and working through what she has she wants to say in her mind. I wouldn't ever do that. Not to you. Even though I was scared, even though I tried to push you away, you still tried to get closer to me. I locked myself away because I was just a burden to you, to Lily, to everyone. Every birthday was the same. Everyone doing their best to pretend that I mattered. Everyone pretending everything was alright. For that one day of the year. I didn't want to exist, but they wouldn't let me. Even after meeting Lily, everything was the same. I was as useless as I'd always been, unable to do anything for her or for myself. I didn't want to be the same way to you. <clears throat> Lily and I were completely wrong. From what she said, everything we did for her, it would have only made her feel worse. Even with that little, even with that little I thought I had right about her was a complete judgment, misjudgment. Even what little I thought I had right about her was a complete misjudgment. After you locked yourself in your room, I decided to try to work out my past as well and sort out my future. I didn't know how to deal with the things I had lost by coming to Yamako. So, I was trying to sort them out myself. I thought it would help us become better friends if I did that. Silence hangs in the air again. I try to keep looking at her, but I can't. I feel really low, and though I want to apologize, I don't know how I possibly could. I hear her take a deep breath and only look back to her after hearing her drop to the ground. The sound of her crying breaks my heart. I know I'm responsible for this, and I know that I can't do anything to help her. If Hanako feels ashamed, then I feel all the more so. I rush to her as tears continue to roll down her cheeks unabated, wrapping my arms around her. I don't care how much, I don't care about how I must look anymore. I just want to be close to her right now. I'm sorry, Hiso. I, I've messed up everything. It's fine. Everything's fine. I'm the one that should be sorry. I was meddling around behind your back and I never told you anything. I can feel my grip tightening on Hanukkah as my vision blurs. I can't be bothered trying to hold back now. I have to force my words out as a lump begins to stick in my throat. To tell you the truth, Hanako, I was scared. For the first time since my heart attack, I was really scared. So? I lost so much when I came to Yamaku. I was... Depending on you, more than I ever thought I did. Even now, I still have that hole inside me. After losing my entire life and everything I'd known, the thought of losing you as well. But I'm just useless. You're my friend, Hanako. You're... No, you're more than that. I love you, Hanako. I love you so much that the thought of losing you frightened me so much. Ah, uh, this is bad. I'm really letting all of this out. I can't bring myself to look at her face right now. I'm sorry, so I can't help feeling a bit happy for so long. That's what I've wanted to hear. The last of the floodgates break. The sound of her crying permanent permeating the air as her body jerks against mine. We hold each other tightly, connecting more closely than ever in our shared grief and our shared happiness. I don't know how things are going to be like after this. Right now, though, I don't care. There's no other person in the world that either of us could possibly share these memories and emotions with. Nobody. After dropping the dirtied can into a bin next to the bench, I take a seat beside Hanako. She puts away the handkerchief I gave her to clean herself up, which hasn't helped much. Then again, I doubt I look much more presentable. Even now, I feel emptied and a bit embarrassed after letting my emotions out in public like that. It's not a bad sensation, though, and I think Hanako feels, this, feels the same way, too. Have you calmed down a bit? Y yes <clears throat> Fuck. <laughs> y yes thank you. For a while, we just sit and take our time before talking again to one another. We both need a little time to collect ourselves. The weather is nice this time of year. 
Yeah, it is. I closed my eyes for a moment, relishing the feeling of the sun's heat and the cool breeze against my face. The weather really is nice today. Really, really nice. You know, I don't really want to go back to classes right now. Do you? She shakes her head as she finishes wiping her eyes with her cuff. The small smile she gives is nice, and it's a reminder of how earnest it can be. Smiling for other people might be a completely normal, everyday thing. For Hanako, though, she smiles so rarely and so sincerely that each and every time she does it, I feel a sense of relief and happiness. I'm sorry for everything. It's okay. I think we both have a bit to be sorry for. I know that I'm too shy. I know you don't want to be me. Ah. Uh. I know you don't want me to be. I don't think I can... You can change, Hanako. I know that because even in the time I've known you, you've already changed. To be honest, just being able to sit here and talk to you like this means that you've changed a lot since we first met. But I can't be like that for anyone else. I don't have any plans for after school lunch either. Hanako's confidence, confidence begins to slide down again. But I think that now, I can finally talk to her as an equal. I can do it because I know that we're just the same in so many ways. Just give yourself time, and I think you'll be able to achieve what you want. No, I'm sure that you'll be able to do it. I can see, the, I can see that you've been trying, and I have faith in you. And you can depend on me if you feel like you need someone to support you. But, but I can't ask that of you. You can because that's exactly what I'm asking of you. I'm going through the same thing, you know. It's called love. Hanako smiles before I get off the bench and dust myself off. She does the same in short measure. <sighs> I'm kind of hungry. You want to grab something to eat? She nods vigorously. The way she's smiling, the way she's acting, even just the general air she gives off. I feel as if... As if this is the first time I've seen her genuinely happy. We both make our way onto the street, walking beside each other. Hisao? Yeah? I... I think... I don't really understand you. I don't think I understand you either. I think that's fine, though. There's not a single hint of despair in our voices. Not understanding each other is only natural. The walls we set up between ourselves couldn't possibly be broken down in a single day. But that's fine. As long as we take it day by day and try to understand one another, I think everything will be okay. As we walk down the street, though, Hanako's eyes flick to my face and back to the street repeatedly. Is something on your mind? You look restless. She slows before stopping completely. When I turn to meet her, she takes a long, deep breath, looking at my face intently this expression. I saw it once before on her face. Just once, when I accidentally surprised her in her room. I... I think... I think I have something I need to give you. What is it? You don't need to be, you don't need to be evasive about it. <clears throat> I wanted to give you this for a long, long time, but now that I need to, it's too embarrassing. Don't worry. I'll accept it, whatever it is. She gives a sweet, bashful smile before taking my shoulder in her hand. Then please accept my first gift to you, Hisao. Hanako? Let's go, boys! <laughs> Man, I'm so happy right now, bruh. Oh, we did it. We did it. Kato is shoujo. <laughs> Clap it up, boys, once again. Oh, man. Wow. Oh, let's go. <sighs> Hanako's root was very... Fastly, okay. Oh, yeah, we get to see like the character design and stuff. Oh, hell yeah All right, let's see 
Because I remember Emmys, which was pretty good. Ooh, whoa, okay. Calm down there, buddy boy. Alright, we got some... It's, it's kind of fun seeing her in these different, like, styles. And there she is, the final product. Four Leaf Studios. Oh, man. Jeez, okay. And there we are. Wow. That was... Okay, if we're gonna... If, if I'm gonna say between Emmy's route and Hanako's route, which one I like the most... I liked Hanako's easily the most. Emmy's route wasn't bad, but I just kind of feel like for what it was, it was just so weird. Like, okay, yeah, we get to know each other, and then we basically just start fucking all the time. And then she's like, oh yeah, my dad's dead, and I'm kind of sad about it. Let's have sex, you know, the day of his, you know, the day of the anniversary of his death. And it was just a little bit... I guess, empty? Like, there wasn't really a lot of substance to the relationship, I guess. Like, you know... But Hanukkah's is the exact opposite. I mean, Jesus Christ, they really fucking went in on this. Like, the whole thing of, hey, it's this conflicting thing of, do I, tr you know, obviously she, the way she acts, it makes me want to protect her. But from her point of view, it's, I don't want to be viewed as somebody who needs to be protected. You know, but, and it's like this balance, it's, it's like this conflict of, um, like him wanting to, oh yeah, I want to get close to her, become friends with her, and I want to protect her, and her kind of like, you know, I, I don't want to lose him necessarily, but with my past experiences with friends, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily so keen to getting super close with him. And I don't want to be viewed as somebody who needs to be protected. So it's like all this, all the birthdays and oh yeah, let's invite her out and do this thing for her and this thing for her. It has the opposite effect of what we had, you know, intended it to have. But this ending was honestly really good because I think it was just so like real you know it wasn't like oh hey yeah we've had this emotional scene and now everything is perfect you know there's still we they still have walls that they're going to need to gradually break down but they've kind of realized that in order to do that they need to approach each other and they need to communicate those things they need to communicate what they're feeling and what they think and what they've experienced because you see, you see what happens when they don't do that, you know, because in all reality, it, with the whole sex thing was a negative on both sides because she didn't necessarily want to do it, but she was only doing it because she thought that was the only way that he wouldn't leave her. And, you know, for him, obviously he's kind of giving in to, you know, instinct at that point. And also, um in a way kind of forcing his emotions on her when he doesn't necessarily understand what her emotions for him are so it's this like really horrible thing like this horrible feeling afterwards when you realize oh well shit you know she didn't actually want to go through with that and i should have stopped right like i should have stopped to think about this but i didn't so you you're both kind of sat there feeling like really guilty <laughs> kind of both ways um but it, it was it was nice how um <clears throat> again it wasn't just now everything's fixed because we've talked it out there's still things that they're going to like need to work through and there's still things that um you know there's, there's still like you said the wall's not going to be broken down in a single day um but, Jesus, that was an amazing story. <sighs> well, I think if I'm going to go, if I'm going to keep playing this game, 
You know, I, I am interested in the other ones because I believe there's what? Emmy, Misha, not Misha, Shizune, Lily, Hanako, and I forget what the girl with no arms, I forget what her name was. So, that's what? Uh, one, two, three, four, like five, right? Am I, am I counting that right? Emmy, Hanako, No Arms, She's an A, Lily. And we have two of those down, so we'd have three left. If I'm gonna, if I would do this again, then I'd probably go for Lily's route next, I suppose. Or I would maybe go for, um, She's an A's route. But, uh, anyways, that's gonna be it for this time. I hope you guys enjoyed Hanako's route as much as I did. If you did, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below telling me what your favorite part of her route was, or even just letting me know what game you'd like to see me play next. If you enjoyed this series, or any other videos or series on my channel, then I highly recommend that you hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you will be notified when a new one of those videos comes out. Anyways, that's it for me, and I'll see you in the next one.